there are many factors that contribute to the development of poor self-esteem or body image concerns and ultimately eating disorders. And some of those, you know, I'm sure many of you know, family stressors, right? Conflict in the family, um, anxiety, excuse me, anxiety, depression. Um, pressure to be perfect uh, in, in the population uh, that we are here today, being a student and being um, good at what we do. Social and societal pressures. There's a lot of research that shows that even biological influences, um, genetic predispositions can make us more susceptible to these kinds of things. And also media messages. And when I look at all these factors, I kind of think about it as a puzzle. If you think of a jigsaw puzzle, they all fit together. There's no one right or wrong one. They all work together to make the picture, a very unique picture for each person. Some people, maybe one piece is bigger than others, um, but they're all connected in some way. And one of the things I often think about when, when I think about media is media is often the spark. And she just mentioned earlier how we were bombarded with all these images, right, from TV, advertisements, those kind of things. And media often kind of lights that fire of those other factors that are that are um, influencing us in some ways. One thing that empowers me and, and makes me feel hopeful in what I do is that we can make a difference and we can make changes. And it doesn't matter which piece start working on, there's going to be ripple, uh, ripple effects into all the factors, into the whole puzzle, into the whole picture. Changing one piece does have an impact on all the other pieces. Um, we often hear how media influences our ideas of who we are, what we should be, what we should look like. And these messages start when we're very young, right? They start when we're a child and all through our adult life. I believe we can become good media critics. We can, in some ways, work on dim dim uh, diminishing that spark, changing um, how we view the world, how we see ourselves in relation to the world. And there's a few images I want to share with you, kind of always catch my attention. The first one, I don't know if you guys recognize strawberry shortcake. She's an old cartoon toy. And what you can see here is over time she has evolved. She has changed. Uh, when I was young she had more of this other look on the left and nowadays she has more in the cartoons for kids. She's, she's thinner. She's taller. Her face is more angular. So there's been a lot of changes. Um, and, the, and the girls that are playing with her today and watching her cartoons today are seeing this other version. Recognize Dora. Dora also has gone through a transformation. Dora used to look like a little girl, right? <laughs> now Dora is tall and lean and thin. Very fantastic pose. She's fierce. She's got jewelry. She has grown up, right? But little girls who are playing with her, this is the image of this is what, what I want to be. This is what little girls should be. If you think it's only targeted toward little girls, you're wrong. Good old G.I. Joe, he's evolved too. He used to be kind of like a traditional man, right? Got his backpack, got his gear there. But now he is uber muscular. Um, he has been working on the gym and taking quite a few too many steroids, I think. <laughs> and this is the image that little, all the little boys, these toys are targeted toward little boys primarily, but these are the images that they're growing up with. This is what men should look like. And you see this also in movies. And, um, I think there's lots of G.I. Joe cartoons and movies as well. If you think it's just to humans, you're wrong. <laughs> My Little Pony also has been diving lately up here. <laughs> she has slimmed down tremendously. And once again, not looking like a pony anymore. She's got a very angular face. She's very long, thin legs. And we see that the images as children, right, that we're exposed to the idea of what we think is attractive gets smaller and smaller and um, a lot different. So then what happens when we're adults? Do the images change? Do we go back to reality? Well, I want to show you guys. Some of you might have seen this before, but I find it striking. They posted it on um, Upworthy.com. 
pictures, they're not real. In, in, in the day that we live in today, often they're being edited and enhanced, changed. What do we do with that? How do we keep um, our idea of what is beautiful, what is real, when so many things around mm -hmm. us really aren't? They've been changed or um, enhanced. They're not the reality of our friends, our girlfriends, our mothers, ourselves. So how do we become a good media critic? How do we fight back? The first thing that really comes to mind is we need to recognize. We need to recognize that we're in a fight. If we just absorb all the messages that are all around us and just let them in and believe them to be reality, then that's something that we have no power to change, right? So the first step in really recognizing that the things are going on around us and that we have to be aware. The second step or the second tip is to discriminate. Use your creative eye to view all media in a um, way to ask yourself, is this manipulated? Is it edited in some way? Is it realistic or is it enhanced? The third tip is to filter. Determine what magazines, TV shows, me media messages leave you feeling strong, empowered, healthy, and which ones after you view them or experience them make you feel inadequate, insecure, depleted in some way. Make an active choice to walk away from these. And that might mean you're sitting in the doctor's office and there's a bunch of magazines available and you choose which ones you're going to pick up and, and read and you choose which ones you're going to leave on the table. Making a choice. TV shows, right? There's some shows that we watch and we feel pretty good after, and then other shows we start comparing ourselves and feeling really poorly. And those things really are not helping us in our process and in our growth. The fourth is express yourself. As a psychologist, I love this one. Talk back. When we see images on billboards, talk back to the billboard when you're driving down the road. When you see um, a magazine that you can clearly tell, like this picture here has been edited or enhanced or changed, talk back to it. And we don't have to just stop with talking back in the moment, right? When we're seeing these things, talking back to the TV. We can talk back in other ways. Send an email to an editor. Excuse me, of a magazine. Or um, write a letter to a CEO of a company that you think is really negatively influencing the way that we see ourselves and our minds. We can speak up and we can talk back. The fifth tip is to empower. And I really like this one too because we, as human beings, live in groups. We like groups. We work well in groups. And it's really important that we empower the people around us, our friends, our family, to also recognize and speak up. When you're with a group of friends and you observe a, a healthy message, make a joke. Talk about it. Point it out. Um, use humor. But find a way to acknowledge what's happening and what you're seeing together. And the last thing I just want to point out for you guys is um, something that I think is very important, and that is celebrating the positive. There are companies, there are media outlets, there are <coughs> magazines that do try to celebrate diversity. They do try to point out the differences and the values of um, affirming messages and showing love for one's body in a, in a true way. And so when we find those, make a big deal out of them. Support them. <coughs> point them out to your friends and loved ones. And I'm sure many of you have seen this one, but there are many out there. How many have, have you guys have seen the Dove commercials? It's not perfect, right? But it's a process. It's a start to trying to recognize that there are all kinds of women, all kinds of beauty, and we want it to be real, and we want to acknowledge. And the more that we do that, the more it opens the for other companies, other people to do the same. So I hope these tips are helpful to you in some way. I try to incorporate them certainly in my life and, and share them with people. And I have a list of them here on the table. If you have any questions later too, I'd